Hey guys, Chris here. Today I want to show you the right way to use calipers. It's super important to be able to take accurate and repeatable measurements wherever you are so that you can make the best and most well-informed decisions on your designs. The majority of the time I use calipers is to measure existing parts that I need to design around. Sometimes it's to measure a part that I ordered to make sure it's intolerance, but it's usually when I need to go from a physical item into CAD. Okay, let's go through the basics. First, you have the LCD screen here that shows you the measurements out to four decimal places, but that does not mean it's accurate to one ten thousandth of an inch. The resolution of these calipers is five tenths, but the accuracy is plus or minus one thousandth. That means that the smallest increment the LCD will show you is five tenths, but you should never trust it to be more accurate than plus or minus one thou. When you're looking at different calipers to buy, always check the accuracy, and if they're the cheapos that don't even list it, just stay away. Midi Toyos are accurate and durable, so you can't go wrong with them. They're by far the ones I see most in engineers' hands. The zero button makes wherever the calipers are at the moment zero. Then smaller measurements are negative and bigger are positive, which is super useful when you're trying to compare two parts or make a relative measurement. There are a few specific times where that comes in really handy and I'll talk about those later, but just always keep this button in mind when you can't figure out how to measure something, it will definitely come in handy. The origin button is used to recalibrate the calipers. You should re-zero them every time you pick them up. Always clean the jaws first. Fingers work pretty well, but a cloth is better. And then close them and see what they're reading. If it isn't zero, hold down the origin button until it's reading zero. And then if you can, it's not a bad idea to check them on a part of known size, like a gauge pin, to make sure they're good. The inches millimeter button obviously switches units between inches and millimeters. The thumb wheel here gives you some fine control over the jaws. Some people roll their thumb on the wheel like this until it slips so they can apply the same squeeze every time. You just have to be sure to push up like this and not down into the wheel, otherwise it won't really slip. You wanna do a nice gentle roll that way. You'll get a relatively consistent uh, feel to it. And the locking knob on top lets you lock the jaws in place. You can use this if you can't read the screen while you take the measurement. Or, if I'm honest, I'll use it sometimes so I don't forget a measurement crossing the room. Now that you know what the buttons do, how do you actually use calipers? First, definitely don't be too rough with them. They are durable, but you don't want to bend them or mess up the jaws, especially the little tips. When taking a measurement, gently squeeze the jaws together by pushing here or rolling the wheel like I said before. The key is to be consistent with how hard you squeeze. If you can't get a measurement, the same measurement, two or three times in a row, then you're doing something wrong. If you squeeze too hard, you can bend the jaws, damage the part, or mess up the sliding elements inside the calipers. Some people will push the jaws together here when possible to make sure there's no bending going on. To see how hard to squeeze, you can use a gauge pin. Since I know this gauge pin is half an inch in diameter, plus nothing, minus two tenths of an inch, I know it should read 0 .5000 on these calipers. So there, we're good. But if I squeeze harder, I can make the value change, especially the further out on the jaws. I do it. That is too hard. You want to be able to repeatedly measure half an inch. Second, you need to know all the places on the calipers that you can use to measure. If the screen shows one inch, then it's one inch between these jaws. It's one inch around these jaws. It's one inch between the step here and the end of the calipers. And it's one inch between the end here and this end of the calipers. Which reference you use is up to you, depending on what you think will get you the most accurate measurement. But in general, here's where you'll measure outer diameters, inner diameters, step heights, and hole depths. Personally, I use the jaws most of the time, these second, then the depth measurement, and I hardly ever use the step. But depending on what you measure the most, that could be totally different. The third thing to know when using calipers is that just because the screen shows a measurement does not mean it's right. It's the same as any other tool. Garbage in equals garbage out. If you aren't careful to make sure your calipers are clean and oriented correctly, you might as well not even bother taking the measurement. For example, when measuring a shaft diameter, use this part of the jaws, not the tips. The flat section at least gives you a little reference so you can tell you aren't off at some weird angle. Measure at multiple points around the shaft. Also different points along the shaft. And stay away from little internal radiuses like this. They'll mess you up every time. Another thing to keep in mind when measuring an OD or a width is that the more you can increase the area of contact between the calipers and the part, the better. If I measure perpendicular to the axis of the shaft, like this, 
the contact patch is aligned the width of the caliper jaws. But if I can rotate the calipers like this, the line contact doubles in length and you're less likely to miss a high spot or be at an angle. Measuring inner diameters is trickier, but this is how I do it. If you just throw the calipers in there, take a measurement, you're probably gonna get me wrong. What I'll do is I'll swing the jaws back and forth like this around the opposite sides of the, the diameter, keeping the jaws dragging across the ID. You'll be able to feel the jaws open and close slightly as you swing back and forth across the true opposite points. You might also be able to see the value on the calipers uh, go up and down slightly. Once I'm satisfied that I have the max value in that direction, I'll rock the calipers in this direction to make sure I'm not off at some weird angle to the axis of the hole. Just do that a couple of times in a couple of different spots on the diameter until you're satisfied and you have a good measurement. Hole depths and step heights are pretty obvious. Just do whatever you can do to make sure your calipers are perpendicular to your surface in all directions. Make sure you're good this direction and that direction. Measuring the full thread depth of a hole is pretty easy and super useful. So this is how you do it. First, you measure the overall height of the bolt. You zero out your calipers. And then you thread the bolt into the hole all the way until it stops. Then you measure the height of the bolt that's still sticking out. And that is the usable depth of thread in your part. The one thing you have to watch out for is to stay away from the grade markings on the head of the bolt. That'll mess you up. Another useful trick with your digital calipers is to be able to measure the center to center distance uh, between two holes. The holes have to be the same diameter for this to work. First, you measure the ID of one of the holes and you zero your calipers at that diameter. Now you measure outside to outside on the two holes and that is your center to center distance. Now, since this involves like two measurements and zeroing and things, I wouldn't necessarily use this for like a plus or minus one uh, dimension, but you know, definitely for clearance holes on a prototype part you're making or something like that. If you need to measure the thickness of foam or an O-ring, something that squishes, uh, what you can do is grab your part just enough to, to suspend, to hang it there, and then very slowly open up your jaws till it drops and that is the thickness of your part. Otherwise, you can never really tell if you're kind of squishing the material. Or it's hard to get a good feel for it. So just try to get the part where it's uh, not curved and hanging up on two different points on the calipers. Like if this part was really curved like this, measuring it like that would not be a good idea because you're not going to get the right dimension. So measure it in a way that it'll be free to fall out from the calipers when you move them apart. A topic that isn't strictly related to calipers but is related to taking measurements is the use of the terms thou and mil. When I first heard someone say that such and such dimension was three mil too big, I was super confused. Did they mean millimeters? Did they mean millionths of an inch? Nope, they meant thousandths of an inch. Why would there be two shorthand ways of saying a thousandth of an inch? Well, according to Wikipedia, the term mil used to be the standard and is from the Latin word mille. But when the metric system started to become more popular, then it got confused. Millimeter and mil was too easy to get confused. So we started saying thou. For some reason, mills are still the standard for some products like sheets of plastic. So be ready for that. So now you know how to use calipers. If you use them very often, this will all become second nature. But just remember to set zero when you pick them up. Make sure your part and calipers are clean. Make sure your calipers are oriented correctly and you should be just fine. If you have any other caliper tips or tricks, please leave them in the comments below so we can all learn about them. Thanks, see you next time.